Right, okay, so this is the second part of, uh, of Jung's psychoanalytic, uh, psychoanalytic system. Uh, so the first part of this lecture, uh, I'm going to discuss the aspects of personality. So I'm going to explain you in great detail about the system of personality according to uh, Jung's system. Um, so um, this part is slightly confusing even for psychology students, and I'm trying my best to... I'll trying my best. I'll be trying my best to uh, to explain in a more simple way. Uh, but of course, if you have any questions, you can uh, always ask the questions on the Google Sheet, or you can just drop me an email if you'd like. Uh, so this second part of this lecture would concern on the aspects of personality. Um, so I'll I'll explain to you uh, a several different system in our personality that. Uh, that's seemingly separated at first, but uh, you would see that there is an int integration between this system. So uh, Carl Jung believes that believed that the total personality or the psyche, so this is the uh, the universe of our personality. It can it consisted of a completely different system, distinct system of aspects that uh, are dynamics and they are interrelated to one another and and so that it could influence another system in our personality so one breakdown or one problems in one system could affect to uh, could affect another system in our personality so the first system in our personality is the ego so uh, the ego works quite similar to the ego in classical a psychoanalysis version so basically it's the center of consciousness and it's the part of our psyche that we have completely uh, that we have a complete control over it and it concerned it focuses on the idea on the ability to perceive to think to feel and to remember so basically this is the uh, the part of our personality that we are completely aware of and it's actually it's uh, it inlines with the idea of awareness itself and it re it is responsible to it res it is responsible for uh, for doing whatever we are doing in conscious experience yeah and the ego acts in selective way it means that we could uh, choose to uh, focus on another thing and we could choose to ignore several things in our conscious processes but it means that we only have a very few and little awareness uh, on a very small portion of stimuli because we sometimes we only give an, an a, a proper attention to one stimuli and complete ignorance to other stimuli so that's how our conscious processes works we tend to focus on one or two stimuli and deny uh, other stimuli that don't uh, don't get attention in our conscious processes. So basically, the ego works quite similar to what Freud imagined about the ego. And the second system would be quite different uh, from uh, from how uh, from how uh, Freud described about human personality. So the second system would be the attitudes. So this is how we channel the energy how we channel the psychic energy. And there are differences between people. Some people would channel this energy outward them, themselves, but, some, some, but sometimes people uh, choose to channel this energy inward of themselves. So this is a very popular term uh, to distinguish uh, human personality. That is the introversion and ex extroversion. So we could say that uh, people who are extraverted is that people who has a tendency or an attitude or an orientation to channel this the, their energy outward themselves to the external world, to other people. So that's why you will see that these people enjoying social interaction and they suck their energy basically, they get their energy by relating on by relating on other people but there are some types of people who choose to be uh, who choose to channel their energy in work on themselves and they gain more energy by 
uh, by having a good time with themselves. So they enjoy solitude, but it doesn't mean that they are antisocial. Uh, so this is a completely different term. So if you are introverted, it doesn't mean that you are avoiding social interaction. But in that case, you only get the energy by focusing the energy inward yourself. Uh, because uh, the, the, comp uh, the, the differences between people who are extroverted and introverted is that people who are introverts has quite limited energy. So that's why they have to be more focused on themselves in order to preserve their energy. Um, that's also one explanation why people uh, that why people have different orientation, different attitudes uh, when it comes to channeling their own psychic energy. So this is the idea of extraversion and introversion. All right. So um, the third system is the psychological function. So not only the mental attitudes, the uh, orientation where we channel the energy but also how we use the reason, how we perceive information, how we get information and make sense of it. It, it is largely determined by the psychological function. So basically this system concerns on uh, with the way, the opposing way of people uh, perceiving the external world. So when, uh, and how it concerns on how people uh, get uh, the impression of the world where they live in and also how they make sense of it, how they use it to, uh, to adapt, to form their behavior. So there are four different uh, psychological functions uh, where those four, uh, the combination of those four would form uh, certain types of personality. So even though a Jung system is classified into the inner psychic, uh, inner psychic approach, well, actually, in this case, he expanded his theory to a bit more like typological system. So he basically, in this, uh, uh, in this theory, he tried to classify people into different types of personality. Yeah. So that's the basic uh, basic idea of the anal uh, of Jung's analytic analytical psychology. So there are four different uh, functions of the psyche, and those are actually in pairs, uh, and each pair is, is actually the opposite of one another. So the first one is the sensing and intuiting. It concerns on how we perceive information. Some people would stick to the senses, to stick to, to their senses in order to obtain information from their environment. But the second one, the intuiting one, they rely more on their intuition, intuition rather than the senses. So this is completely different parts of how we perceive our world. So the first one would rely on the senses, but the second one would rely more on the intuition. And the second pair of psychological function is how we use this information. Are we process, do we process this information by using our reason in this, in, in these terms? Is that the thinking part of our personal, of our uh, psychological function? But some people would process this, uh, this information by using their feeling rather than their rational, uh, rational uh, processes. So th these two pairs, they are opposed, they are opposing to one another, but again, uh, these were uh, these uh, uh, was when psychologists were not properly trained in uh, scientific method uh, because uh, then uh, existing evidence told us that actually how we feel about something and how we think about something it's not completely opposite to one another so basically thinking and feeling is not contradictory because actually when you feel about something it's actually it's, it's also a cognitive processes so it's it doesn't mean that thinking and feeling is a completely opposite to one another so that would be the um, the more modern view of psychology so uh, combining the mental attitude the extraversion and introversion and also the psychological function uh, we would have uh, different uh, types of personality, which would later expand it, be expanded into um, several types. Yeah, in in a personality inventory that we call the Myers Briggs personality 
uh, Myers-Briggs type indicator that I would explain in the in the different parts of this lecture. Uh, so basically, Jung proposed that uh, there are eight different types of human personality based on the combination between the mental attitudes and also the psychological types. So we would see someone who are extraverted thinking, for example, they would be more logical, objective, and dogmatic. And people who are extraverted feeling, for example, they would be more emotional, sensitive, sociable, more typical. In, and these types are more profound in women than men. And extraverted sensing, these people would be more outgoing, pleasure-seeking, and adaptable. And extraverted intuiting, people would be more like creative, able to motivate others and seize opportunities, and so on. And there are also different, uh, four different types that combines introverted and thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuiting. So basically, there are four, uh, eight different types that uh, people would be classified into eight different types. Again, this is where psychology were uh, were yet become advanced, properly developed, I would say, because the idea of classifying people into different types of personality doesn't make sense at all. Because if if it if it was true, then you would need I, I don't know, like a millions types of different personality because uh, the complexity and the varieties between human person uh, varieties of human personality is just amazingly great. So it doesn't make sense at all that we could fit everyone into eight different boxes. So that would be the idea why typology uh, approach uh, is not yet is uh, is is not more it's is not popular again in psychology. So some people would leave this completely. Um, so, uh, the fifth part of our human psyche is the idea, the contradictory idea of personal versus collective unconsciousness. Um, and this is the, also the modification of Freud's original theory on unconsciousness. So basically there is a personal unconsciousness and this personal unconsciousness is basically, it's very similar to what uh, Freud imagined about unconscious processes, so there is no modification in here. So basically, it's a process where we suppress, when we repress unwanted, trivial, disturbing thoughts. So it did. So it it doesn't come out into our uh, consciousness. But the second would be the additional material of our unconscious processes that that Jung called collective unconscious. So this is the, uh, the, the part where Jung combined uh, the anthropological aspects of human personality uh, by arguing that this part of our conscious, uh, this part of unconsciousness, it's actually inherited from our ancestor and it actually, it, it is a manifestation of uh, of our inherited experiences from our ancestor. So the idea that some symbols in different cultures, even though they don't interact to one another, but there are, a lot, there are similarities between the symbols. Especially, uh, for example, the idea about um, a taboo, for example, uh, a totemor taboo. Uh, some cultures would, um, would, uh, would have a prohibition not to eat or or slaughter a certain animal as a taboo, for example. Uh, in other culture that does not uh, seemingly have a connection within this culture, they, they have the same prohibition. And the, the, ex, uh, the explanation why two different not interacting culture could have completely similar symbol that they that they have exact similar meaning so the the explanation would have would be uh, because we have this collective unconsciousness and we inherited it from our ancestor uh, so that's why the some themes in different cultures could have completely similar themes even though they don't interact with one another and h how Jung came up with this idea is that he observed that different culture in uh, in the world, they have quite similar um, 
quite similar um, themes in their uh, in their civilization. For example, if you see the um, the uh, the landscape, I would say I wouldn't say the landscape, the design, for example, the design of certain uh, holy place in different culture. For example, in Jaffa, you would see a temple uh, that that has completely similar design with a pyramid in Egypt. And the explanation would be, yeah, it it could be a manifestation of our collective unconsciousness because there is no way people in Jaffa would interact to uh, with, would interact with people in Egypt in ancient in ancient times. But why they have com- quite similar design when designing their holy uh, or their holy temple? So that would be the explanation. That's the content. That's the content of their their collective unconsciousness again this is very speculative there is no supporting evidence that could falsify or prove this theory so that would be the end of the second part of this lecture